Hi, welcome into Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti. You know, so Billy was reading some texts he gets. A couple of people I haven't spoken to in five, six years. Hey, man, any truth to this guy being the next head coach to AM? Like, I'm going to tell a guy that I haven't spoken to in four years who AM's about to hire and not, I don't know, leave it to the website that I work for and the way I pay my bills. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you, Rando. Hey, everybody. Uh, what was your favorite part of the show today, Jared? But I loved having Tom Hart on, as always, but also just Billy having the insight. Obviously, has everything in line, kind of first info. So always love hearing from Billy. Well, thank you, Jared. Good insight right there. I did like that. I loved OB. We had a good uh, go hour. We talked about the Alistair with uh, Jimbo. Buzz Williams called in. He had to talk about the game of, uh, on Friday. Hello, Ohio State. So many news uh, items happened this weekend. And, of course, Billy Lucci throughout the Rewind. Check it out right now. And we're going to break it all down as the uh, firing of Jimbo Fisher just yesterday here on Tex Ag's radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers in the Rollo Insurance Studios to go hour presented by the warehouse at CC Creations. I'm David Nuno, and he is our Heisman Trophy voter, Olin Buchanan. Olin, good morning, buddy. Uh, good morning. I'm with you. I like Jimbo. Nice guy. He really is. He's a, a good person, I believe. Uh, but, you know, you have to separate personal feelings from, you know, from success. S- success. It's kind of yeah. like Billy Kennedy. Billy Kennedy, as a basketball coach here, I thought was just a just a heck of a guy. I, yeah. I liked him. I rooted for him inwardly. But is the basketball program in better shape with Buzz Williams as coach? Yeah, I think so. And maybe, hopefully, the football program will find themselves in much better shape with the with someone else in charge. Look, it had to be done. I, I applaud Texas A&M for making it happen. Even after a win, you don't look at something in just a – College football, we all go with the wins and losses that kind of affects your week. But if you look at the totality, they weren't getting the job done. And instead of delaying the inevitable, because that's what it felt like. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, they could have a little success. I never, I did. I mean, let me rephrase this. I did believe he could turn it around. And that was my bad. I thought he could turn it around because in the off season, they did that Hail Mary. They looked in the mirror and they said, we got to make some changes. They didn't make a necessary change. They didn't make enough changes, let me say, because I think there should have been a change in in certain positions out there. But they did go hire an offensive coordinator. At the time, I was against Bobby Petrino for about 32 minutes. Then the more I thought about it, I was like, this is the right idea. And it might still be the right idea. Well, we're we're about to find out here the last couple weeks of the season. But I did think they could turn it around. But at the end of the day, I think you are who you are. It's, it's certain when in, in coaching, when you lose it, you lose it. And I'm not saying he can't get it right somewhere else, but he lost it here. But since I got to Texas, <laughs> this program has been stuck in neutral. Uh, the former Florida athletic director, Jeremy Foley, had a great line that he used when it came to making changes. And it was, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something along the lines of, and maybe, maybe he stole this from a Greek philosopher. But what, must be done eventually should be done immediately right once it becomes clear that this isn't the right guy to lead your program there's no sense in waiting even if it saves you five ten million dollars over the next season if he's not the right guy you got to cut bait and move on um so i commend a m for making that move and for moving on i thought it was evident last year it wasn't just the losing streak it was the vibe around the program um toxic would be too strong a word but it was discombobulated Mm -hmm. and uh, people have asked me since the the change well what why hasn't a&m won like what got in their way and i think the answer is pretty simple i think it's jimbo i think this this hiring in hindsight and uh, it's all 2020 in hindsight uh, was very similar to like a, an aging slugger getting that big mega free agent deal. You know, it's Albert Pujols to the angels. You're paying a guy based on what he did with hope that he's going to recreate it. But his offense was archaic. His quarterback coaching was a great fit 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And the game has changed. So uh, I think that was Im- eventually and and probably immediately what got in the way of the program having success. Yeah, obviously you can't argue against the recruiting. The recruiting was top notch. It was fantastic. And he deserves a lot of credit for that. But the execution on game day um, and the, the, the kind of vibe around the program, all of that got in the way and turned into a roadblock.
on the proud versus we got a lot of work to do scale this early in the year, where were you sitting coming home? Because that is a hard earned, meaningful road win. And I think just kind of a tone, you know, it could serve as anyway, a tone setter for this, uh, which should be a really fun and challenging uh, pre SEC schedule. But wh- where were you, where were you sitting when you're on that plane coming home besides probably sitting there watching, watching the game, which I'm sure you do the whole. I, I, I was, I, I was, uh, I, I mean this genuinely. It's not coach speak. Yeah. Um, I have great, genuine love for the people in our group. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Henry Coleman was just an absolute granimal. I think <laughs> he has matured uh, at a rate that is very, very difficult to find. I thought H, for a guy who hasn't started back to back games in his college career, had an incredible first week of the season. Mm-hmm. I think Jace has all of the right intangibles that are important to us. I think Eli, like he's just a microwave. You put him in and it's like uh, he's about to score. I think Mo is starting to gain the consistency on a daily basis that we want from him. Andy Garcia may shoot one ball, maybe right. a ball a half, but you take him off the floor because he impacts the game in so many ways that are not in a stat sheet. I I think Solo was great on Monday, really struggled with foul trouble uh, at Ohio State, but like it's uh, it's not a player. Or is an easy guy to talk to because he's so lovable and he's so fun to watch. Uh, Boots is the guy that you just count on day after day, like, you almost take him for granted sometimes, but I, I really think it's the collection of all of those guys. Barrett Salee, RIP Summling graphic. I heard you with him yesterday. I did tell him that. I said, can you stop with the Summling graphic? No. Yep. And finally retire it. Um, you know, the thing is, is uh, the thing about that graphic, it was annoying as hell, and it wasn't just him putting it out there. It was everyone, but... It it wasn't – there were people that would fall into that, see, they shouldn't have hired, fired someone. That rabbit hole, um, for whatever reasons they wanted for saying that, um, if they wanted to try to make A&M look bad in some way, I always thought it was it – was, I always thought if you thought that when you looked at that, you were – you'd had an agenda or you were stupid. I don't know which one. Uh, that wasn't the point of it. Or it shouldn't have been. If you want to say A and M is continuing to spin its wheels, no matter who they bring in there, and now all they've done is just spend a lot more for the same result, that doesn't mean that Kevin Sumlin should be in year twelve here. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it. It what we we all know what it means is that A and M is still A and M, and they can go spend all the money in the world, and they haven't changed that. So they really need to make a good hire this time. I really liked what, what I really like the message Josh Pate has been uh, saying about A and M in the last twenty years. It is a tremendous job, and you can win massively here. Yeah, but you got to find the right guy, and they haven't. And I look around like the weird thing is A and M hasn't really been deep, deep in the doldrums these dark ages, and and you hope they're not going there. And that's what you know it. When you think of this higher, you go, I hope they don't go there. Um, where the, you know, go from someone didn't work, Jimbo didn't work. Now there's a really bad hire. Now it really gets dark. But the reality is, most coaches can come in here with what they're given and do this seven and five, eight and four, occasional nine and three thing. Right. I, I mean, I, I, I really believe that. I believe most coaches can come in here and do that. All right, Jared, tell the people what to do since we have so many viewers today on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any Tech Sags content. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you mañana.